Hi, let's try this one more time. <laughs> so somebody basically put it up to ask me a point blank on um, a very odd question with which I can probably talk to about for like seven hours about um most people who bring up black and black crime only bring it up are racists who bring it up to talk about how ineffective like black on white crime is or vice versa. And they even brought this post up by this guy named our woman named R. Lackner, who I'm might be a woman. I don't know. R. Lackner is the type of person who um has her own beliefs, but got tired of people insinuating she was acting in a racist manner for basically saying boycotting Beyonce during the Super Bowl by disrespecting police officers, thinking both candidates are evil, thinking Trump is right, has some good points about Muslims, and likes guns. Whoever R. Lackner really is got so pissed off by um the lack of fair treatment she was seen and decided to just be say, well, I guess I'm a racist now and I'm engaged, so I'm much happier. Fuck off. More or less what she said. Or he. Don't know. So this is a response to all that. First off, I'm I kind of share some of R. Lackner's points. I do wish there was more of a dialogue between her and some of her friends. Well, uh, some friends with more a high IQ. I'm not sure if many of her friends do about um some of the things she feels. So just to be really quickly about the Beyonce thing and the Black Panthers by extension. First and foremost, it's not a one to one metaphor with the Black Panthers and the KKK. The Black Panthers, at worst, were a parody of the KKK. They use some of the same rhetoric, just in a pro-black way as opposed to a pro-white way. And please try to understand, actually, no, it's the same thing. I don't like the Black Panthers neither. I'm sorry. I can admit they stood for some good things, things I actually liked. I like the whole being pro-community mindset. But I do know the Black Panthers basically ended up tearing themselves apart internally because some people wanted to be more extreme and the other group did not want to be. And that's how they tore themselves apart. I believe their actual leader, Huey? Huey Newton? was on the side of um not wanting to be that extreme. Nobody likes an extremist, and this is why. Where the Black Panthers did have some good points, and they really did, what's been synonymous across our culture is just the bad extremist points and philosophy they had. Same way a little bit with Malcolm X, where his more negative extremist philosophies are more popular than just some of his nicer, low-key ones. Extremism is bad because it basically ruins any movement ever. People are not going to remember the good things you stand for. They're going to remember all the bad things you stand for. Or the worst yet, they're going to remember how you stood for those things. How do you fight? Do you fight with respect and integrity? Or do you fight by um, basically saying, fuck you? It seems like too many people were trying to basically express um, their fuck you opinions to R. Lackner over here. That pissed her off and she was like, well, fuck you too. Which I think is what I mean when I say parody. Her whole message is like, oh yeah, this is what I think. And if you think differently, I guess I'm better than you. And fuck you. She didn't actually say fuck you, but I think that's the message. She's now a parody of that same kind of closed-mindedness. I think there's a discussion around Beyonce and what she's fighting for. I don't agree with Beyonce, by the way. I don't. I just don't. I would much rather work with people to understand these things and why they're so damn difficult and hard to fight than just spend my time saying, hey, guess what? Fuck you. That's stupid. This is my same problem with Black Lives Matter as a movement. The argument and the discussion needs to be tailored around discussing and working together. Not, here's what we have to say. You have to listen to us. No one wants to listen like this. I want to be clear, though, the way I've looked into history, I believe this is true. Martin Luther King was able to get shit done when well, he had a whole movement behind him. It, single people do not change the tide of history. They work with other people to change the tide of history. Point is, you can ignore Martin Luther King because of peaceful protest. You couldn't ignore some of the shit Malcolm X was saying. It takes I think it takes a good balance of both being loud. And verbose enough for people to hear you is important. The caveat, of course, is being this, though. Having integrity and fighting a good way. Fighting in the best way. A way people can respect. I don't respect this idea of shut the fuck up and listen to what I have to say. It only encourages motherfuckers to do the same damn thing. 
This is why I've always felt like one of the best things any political movement ever can have is diversity. The ability to bring in diverse people and actively trying to bring in diverse people is paramount. You don't just need people who think like you to understand. You need people who don't to understand. The fight is really to change hearts and minds, not be like, I'm mad, listen to me. That doesn't work. Everyone right now is mad and wants them to listen to you, listen to themselves. That's stupid. We need to talk. Dialogue needs to happen. The, I've seen certain BLM movements fucking do this, and I thought it was fucking smart. They work with the police. Because you know what? Then we have a solution. Let your complaints be known. Let the police know you're worried that shit can happen to you. That's where a lot of this is coming from. We are directly worried that this can be us. They don't see Eric Gardner. They see themselves. Even if they should think a little bit further. By the way, just as someone who's been a victim of a major crime and due to a situation going on with a family member, I'm now on the other side of this situation as well. I want to be clear on something. When it comes down to court cases, don't do a damn thing until the court case is out because you don't know what happened. Everything is subjective. Matter of fact, you do realize if there is not enough evidence, people walk just because you do not want someone with a small amount of evidence to go to jail because that sets a precedent for every other court case. Let the police do their job. Let them collect all the evidence they need to get their damn job done and then withhold judgment. For instance, let me explain something. You guys know why Trayvon Martin's killer got off, right? George Zimmerman? He got off because the pattern of murder didn't line up. He didn't just walk up and shoot him. It was fucked up what George Zimmerman did. I am not defending George Zimmerman, not even slightly. I am trying to explain why he got off. And if you can't handle that, I also understand because, again, you're worried that you can get Trayvon Martin. You can be the person being shot because somebody had somebody thinks really racist or fucked up things about you. Your life can be over in a situation like this. And that's scary. Not doing any damn thing wrong. Point Anyway, Zimmerman got off because of this. He called the police and told them what he was doing. In addition, we don't know what happened with the fight. We don't know who threw what punch first. And you know what? There's some evidence to suggest stuff. You need concrete. You need shitloads of evidence. You need motive, premeditated. If anything, I often wonder, would George Zimmerman have been arrested if they went for attempted murder? They went for full blame murder, as in a murder charge means like you were trying to kill him, not you accidentally killed him. If they went for the accident, the one which I believe is manslaughter, I think they would have won. Or at least had a higher chance of winning. That's what happened there. I understand, though, you're still worried that that could be you. Someone thinking the wrong way and you being mistreated? Because the thing is, when you're a minority in this country, when you're a woman in this country, or even as people are beginning to feel just being white in this country, you feel like you're going to be mistreated by this or that group. And that scares you or pisses you off. You, what you, what This is why it's important that we fight this way. When you saw this video, when you clicked on I have a question. Did you see a black man first or did you see a man first? Which am I first to you? If I'm a black man first to you, my question is... What does that really mean? What's the difference between a black man and a white man in your eyes? Do you see me as less of myself? Am I a man first or am I a black man first? Am I a human being first or am I a black human being? Which am I first? Start of these fights, I really feel like are getting people to understand things from a different perspective. This is why I tend to like most feminist ideology, because I'm a man. I don't think about things from a female's perspective. This is why I like to hear a female's perspective. This is also why I find myself on a pro-choice side of things because I'm not a woman. I think it's not my place to judge you. Only God can judge you on one hand and on the other hand, you have to do what's best for you. No matter what, you have to make the choices you can live with. I don't want anybody aborting anything. I just recognize that that needs to be a choice you make. If I don't like that choice, so be it. But it's not my place to judge you and it damn sure isn't my place to stone you. Who I look like? Do I look like Jesus or do I look like the Pharisees to you? I'm not doing that. <sighs> you feel me?
So much of it, of what we stand for is being lost with the way we fight. For instance, I don't like Donald Trump, but when I talk to people about Donald, I try not to be disrespectful. I try not to be rude. I try to hear their arguments as to why. And then I explain from my perspective why I don't want to vote for Donald Trump. I see some of the reasons why. And I think that's the other thing we're fucking up on in general in this country. We don't hear anybody. Or we assume because they think differently they're crazy. When I told someone I was going to vote for Hillary Clinton the other day, they called me an idiot. And then as we began to talk about our difference of opinions, they very quickly apologized. I'm still, he told, he knows I, this guy knew I was going to vote for Hillary Clinton. And yet he respected the fact that I respected his opinions enough to apologize. He made an assumption about me, acted on the assumption Realized what he said was a little fucked up and apologized. That's something that can be easily happen just by holding our respect. There are going to be people who think differently than you, and that's okay. This is why it's so important to respect other people. And this is why it's important for every political movement to fight in a way that encourages understanding. You want people to understand you. And if I can, because I've been going pretty long and I want to explain something about black and black crime and why I care about this more. I've always looked at myself as the three fingers pointing back as everyone's pointing fingers. Hell, my favorite Bible verse goes like this. Cast out the beam in your eye before you cast out the beam in mine. We have so much shit we need to fix that I don't know how we're actually going to fix it. The police can, did you know the police can only protect you like, you know, witness protection if there's a federal case involved? And that a lot of times where people want to be better people, I think I'd be you'd be surprised how many times I've heard of people just not wanting to fucking fight, but they feel like they have to because the other person's fighting. How can you where I can make the argument that you should be past official and never resort to violence. But at the same way, you can, how can you expect someone to do that when the other person really wants to fight? We're not all turning the other cheek is very difficult. And in some of these situations, when the situation escalates, a lot of times you feel like, what else was I supposed to do? Sometimes when you go to the police, they're late to respond because they're so busy or there's only so much they can actually do. They can do shit when a, after a crime is committed. They're not, there's not much they can do before. So some people feel like, why even bother? And don't forget, if you're a police officer, you don't understand or get certain problems and you just say, well, I guess we're going to do this. It's basically up to the other person to just look at the, the be the bigger man and just let it go. And it's hard to let shit go when you feel like you were mistreated. And it could be so easy to be mistreated. Imagine if, um, let's take R. Lackner's perspective. That if she, if R. Lackner was a police officer, saw a black person wearing, um, uh, a leather jacket with the fucking bullet things. Which I, when I saw Beyonce do it, I thought it was a fucking, um, Michael Jackson reference. Sorry, anybody else knows Beyonce took a long time to be pro-black? Yeah. Anywho, what if she was a cop, R. Lackner was a cop, and she had to deal with someone wearing one of those jackets, and automatically she was a little bit miffed at that, and she acted on that, even slightly, versus someone who didn't. It could be the slightest of slights. It would be a human interaction, but now tie that into power. We want unbiased cops, but cops are human. They're going to carry innate biases. It could be literally the fact that they saw someone die the day beforehand, making them feel a little bit extra on edge dealing with somebody else. I'm sorry. I had a friend who wanted to be a cop and literally decided not to be a cop based on looking at the suicide rates and the depression rates. It is a hard as fuck job. It is not fucking easy. And where we all feel like they should be on their best P's and Q's, and honest to God, you really should. That doesn't make it easy to be. Look, I feel like in general, people don't like being involved in bigger political movements. I mean, seriously, how many of y'all are active in any political scene? Well, see, now put yourself in a situation where there's a lot, you're in a high crime area and you have the same approach. You are going to run into the police. You are in a position where you are going to run into them. It's just a matter of time. And you have that same approach. You don't know any police officers. You haven't made any effort to get to know any of the police chiefs or go to any community events. So all you have is reputation by other people who haven't done so. So you have you more than likely have a negative perception based on what you heard. And it's hard not to act on that. 
basically, I feel like in general, most Americans don't like being active in any of the active scenes, like being involved with your police, with your police union, which I think everyone really should be. It clears up and explains a lot of this shit really quickly. Just by talking with cops, I found out a fucking lot about how hard their jobs really are. Not excusing some of this shit. I'm trying to contextualize some of this shit. And why, what's the other half of the problem? We don't know the police. In addition, New Haven is one of the cities where they can say this shit, but we actually had drives and ID and this um, plan that basically said we try to hire local people to be police officers. We encouraged it. We looked for it. Basically so, if you live in the community, you're less likely to miss people from that area. So it's less of Joe Schmo from Groton and more um, Johnny Rockhill from fucking New Hallville. You feel me? From New Haven, born in New Haven, policing New Haven. Through the police union, not some vigilante shit. Because I'm sorry, that vigilante shit isn't accountable to anyone. Oh, I'm sorry, your, your son's gone, I feel bad for you. By the way, enjoy never knowing why. Yeah, how fair is fucking that growing up? The child or person you love is gone and not knowing why. And you motherfuckers think that whole police your own shit is smart. No, it's not. Police your own shit isn't smart because it doesn't talk about accountability. And the police, believe it or not, have some form or semblance of it. And if you think it doesn't, why don't you start working with your politicians to start fixing that? In general, we have the same basically, how do I put it? This is reflected in politics too, which pisses me off. We have this idea of we want to do drive-by politicking. We want to basically be, hey, give us the shit now. We don't want to work with you to get shit done. That doesn't. That's not how this works. Why the fuck would they waste their time? You're only going to show up, leave and bounce, and then even then you probably won't vote them in after they do shit. P.S. This is my big gripe I have with Obama, if I'm being honest. He did shit that I actually fucking like, and it didn't exactly result in the best um, voter turnout. And that really does piss me off. Seriously, there's no way in fucking hell the Republicans should be able to take back the Senate. No beef to the Republicans on this, mind you. But seriously, when Democrats do things for people, it doesn't always get the best turnover. I do feel like that's not the case with Republicans. Yeah, we need to fix that. I have so much I could fucking say. Look, R. Lackner, if you ever do hear this, I would love to just talk with you and... Put in the, no, I would love to listen to you and hear what you have to say. The Beyonce thing, I get where Beyonce was coming from, but yeah, I'm not a pro-Black Panther person. I don't think both candidates are equally evil. I think there's an argument for Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, and anybody running. I know who I'm going to lean for. And you actually, I do like what he said there. I don't like the way way Donald Trump said it, but I think he has some good points about Muslims. I'd rather argue that more point out to you. I don't think this is how you fight ter different in discussion. R. Lackner, if you're out there, I'm seriously, I don't know if you are a woman or a dude or not. I would love to talk to you or to put it differently. I would love to hear what you have to say and why. And I'm sorry that um you have a lot of friends who um didn't reach out to you and talk with you. I think that's a little fucked up and a little sad. And I would encourage you that even though this is some of the shit you deal with, I'd like to think our lives are better when we have diversity. I have friends who are never going to vote the same way I do, but I still like having them in my friend group. And they've said some of the same shit you said because they see things from a different perspective that I don't think about. I think it's necessary for me to have friends like that. And to my friend on Facebook who um, basically told me, um, what are my opinions on uh, bringing up black and black crime, people talk black and white crime, I usually say this, both are an issue. Why can't we talk about both? I would prefer we focus more on black and black crime, which is an issue and a problem. The cop issue is a problem too. I just feel like it's in different areas. One part is part in our culture, which is a lot of just the American culture, just, you know, and a bit of a microcosm and a poorer microcosm, which I feel like a lot of our problems are more based on poverty. And in turn, the cop thing, I would say, is more of a community problem interacting with the police. I feel like fixing that should help immensely. In addition, more community people who are part of the police. And I feel like this is the most controversial thing I'm going to say. 
I'm not sure how I feel about the idea that the worst police officer in any given police station has the same access to a police union, which ensures them a lot of benefits. By the way, this is why police officers get off on paid leave. They have a police union. I believe they're entitled to it. I'm not so sure about that, which is fucked up to say because, again, I have a family member who is a cop and I have a friend who is a cop. I don't know. If you're a police officer, maybe you can um, break that one down for me on whether that's okay and that's not. I'm just saying it makes me feel like literally the worst guy can get it. Is there a situation where a police officer doesn't have access to their union? In general, I consider myself a pro-union person. I've worked with the unions in New Haven. It's um, I've always heard this as being an inherent problem in tech with any union. The worst person on any job has the same rights to the union that the best officer does. Guaranteeing that they have protection, even if they probably don't deserve said protection. I don't know. There might be more to unpack. If you're a police officer and you would like to weigh in, please do. But yeah, that's my opinions on black and black crime, police crime, and this R. Lackner person from Yale. I don't know. I'm Aaron. Peace and love.